welcome Luis de Cristobal, director of the Mediterranean Open. Welcome to the Pickleball Addiction podcast, Luis. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. No problem at all. So, um, so you're based out in Malaga, that's right? Yeah, it's uh, the Mediterranean life. <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the what's the temperature like there at the moment? Uh, I think in Celsius, I only can say it in Celsius that it's going to be around 26, 27 now. Okay. And then, in, well, well, we'll go on to the Mediterranean Open in a minute, but that's in December, right? So is that still, still in the 20s, right? In uh, Mallorca? Or is it a bit yeah, lower? Yeah, I think it's, hmm. it's, it's pretty winter, warm. but it's the Mediterranean winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so um, before we get started, it'd be really good to hear a little bit about yourself, your background, like what you do uh, for a day job, what, what you do in Pickleball. Um, well, um, I'm an economist. I have been working uh, most of my life in private banking, in best funding, and uh, then I was working as an entrepreneur in uh, both in, uh, in Spain and in Mexico, and uh, after my my career in that i decided to quit that and i'm a consultant for a strategy for big companies and small companies and also a professor and i'm really interested in sports so i found in pickleball the mix between my my background my my professional background and to do one of the things that i really love that it's organize events we love organize events i manage a, a social entity that we have a uh, we have the purpose of helping uh, social entities for, for people with uh, mental and physical disabilities, also for all people. So Pickleball is the place for all <laughs> our purpose to be and to be uh, together at the same time. Okay, yeah. So you don't you don't just work in Pickleball then, is that right? You, you run event, different kinds of sporting events or is it p purely Pickleball? I think... I I think I'm starting to work only in pickleball. <laughs> that was right, not right. planned, but with this Mediterranean open thing. No, no, but we, we mostly as a social entity, we, we have a lot of uh, contracts with uh, government. We organize events of uh, um, entrepreneurship uh, for uh, public uh, participation, but we are starting to be more focused in, in pickleball since it's something we are really, really enjoying it. And it's something with a, with a high demand because I guess there are a lot of people wanting to play uh, tournaments, but not a lot of high level tournaments, at least mm -hmm. in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll go on to that now a little bit. So tell us about the growth of pickleball in Spain. I mean, paddle is really, really popular sport. It's probably, I think Spain is, 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 is where paddle is most popular in the world, but pickleball is seeing some growth as well. Yeah, I think uh, paddle for us is like there are more people playing paddle than the people not playing paddle. It's yeah. like like crazy, and it, it was it was super big during the 2010, 2011. But then with the pandemic, it started to grow again. It was like like something really huge. But I think is um, a lot of people are finding in pickleball a different sport with uh, less injuries. Uh, it's easier to play maybe for all people, maybe for, for tennis players. No, they, no, they don't normally like paddle, but uh, we are really far away from that. I have to say that I started playing pickleball in 2018 and uh, in the Spanish Open 2018, 2019, we were all friends, you know, we all met each other and it was the, the new people was mm. the people from the UK, the people from England, maybe from Finland, but uh, we were just yeah, a small group. With the, also with the pandemic, it started to grow. Now we have clubs in, not in all Spain, but mainly in all Spain. And uh, I guess we have like 25, 30 clubs growing really good. So they are doing... Uh, the things really properly, but we are still in, I don't know, between five to 10,000 players. So it's nothing to compare with the two or three million players of, of Padel or with the one million tennis players. So we have a lot of uh, <laughs> path to run and to, mm. to walk away. Yeah. yeah. But even so, it's, it's still, you've seen since 2018, it's been a, a lot of growth, right? Yeah, I think I think actually 
in a couple of years, that uh, 10,000 could be a 100,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not something crazy because uh, it's becoming uh, official sport somehow with the, with the government, with also with the, with the tennis federation. So I think uh, more clubs, schools, academies are, are, are starting to have a pickleball courts soon so it's going to be a class for the for the students maybe in the in the high school or before and that will absolutely make the sport grow really yeah yeah so we have we have something in the uk called sport england i don't know if you're familiar with sport england but there's certain um barriers to entry to be to be recognized as a an official sport in the uk so Pickleball isn't yet an official sport in the UK, according to Sport England. It has to go through some, and um, we're in the process of making that happen. Is there something equivalent in Spain? Is it recognized as an official sport in Spain yet? Hi, Mark Mars here. I hope you're enjoying the show. This podcast is sponsored in part by the Pickleball Addiction Store and newsletter. To support the show, please check out the Pickleball Addiction Store at pickleballaddiction.co, where we stock a wide range of paddles, balls, nets, and other accessories. Use coupon code POD10, that's P-O-D-1-0, to get 10% off your first purchase. You can also check out the Pickleball Addiction newsletter at pickleballaddiction.news, where we cover the latest news in pickleball from the UK and around the world. Thanks for your support, and now back to the show. Or, or, or does that no, does not, that, does not, that not yet. exist? Not yet. We also have the Consejo, Consejo Superior de Deportes that is uh, led by the government that uh, still uh, doesn't consider the pickleball as a sport, even even if uh, pickleball is starting to be in the tennis federation. Right. Okay. So it's the tennis federation is going to take pickleball under its wing, is it? And prom- and prom- help promote yeah, exactly. pickleball. Yeah. Okay. That started like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So that's very new. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I guess hence what we'll come on to in a minute with uh, the the Mediterranean Open. But before that, um, so you te- tell us a little bit about where it all began for you. When did you first hear about pickleball? When when did it kind of start to interest you? I I was I was living in Mexico, and when I moved back to Spain in 2018, I went to play tennis, and uh, some uh, tennis professor. Uh, told me please come here and try that and I was so surprised because it was like I don't know if they are playing ping pong or they are playing like uh, <laughs> with paddles on the beach something like that that was like really small <laughs> and really confusing and uh, but I started to play and it was I found it super easy because you know when you play tennis you it's hard to find someone to play at same level to have yeah. fun both of you and with pickleball like in in an hour it was Super easy to have fun with, uh, you know, with uh, 16 people like going, changing the, changing the courts. And uh, that was in uh, June. And in September, I was playing the, the, the Spanish Open. So it was like, <laughs> that's impossible in other sport. So, yeah, yeah and, I, and it, it started to be like a really important part of my life. Uh, we, uh, we met a really good group of friends. We had the opportunity to train in a... In a school, uh, um, it was led by by Carlos Perez, that is one of the top Spanish players, and we we trained like two days a week. It was super nice with top players, and that's uh, that was one of the best moments of the week during that 18, 19, and twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so, w- when did it happen that you started doing you know more than just playing pickleball? When when you actually started to do something beyond beyond that and start to work in pickleball how did that happen so um, as as a event organizer and as a company consultant uh, i was i had super clear in my mind that uh, the next step for pickleball was to make uh, big events because uh, pickleball is about a community it's so nice that you can have 70 years old players 10 years old players, uh, professional players, and, you know, amateur players at the same time. So building a community uh, that would be a good uh, way to to grow the sport. So in uh, at the beginning, at the end of uh, 2019, 
we started to talk with a really small village in, in Spain and we organized a really, really weird open because it was in an 8,000 inhabitant city in, uh, in, uh, in Aragon that it's between, uh, in the middle of between Barcelona and Madrid. And uh, people from five different countries came, a lot of uh, uh, people from the UK, Karen from, the, from uh, Pickleball England, Tadea, Louis Laville, they came. And it was so nice because I think we were the first European tournament offering uh, cash prizes. Uh, mm. Also, the, the Spanish national TV came and, uh, and it, was, it was really nice. The problem is like in 10 days after where we had the lockdown <laughs> for the COVID because that, that, that was in March. But uh, even with yeah. that, we learned about that and uh, we decided to wait for, the, for another moment to do that because um, I was super sure that we had the, the, the possibility to make really good connections with uh, key partners. So, for mm. example, it's what we are doing now. No, it's, it's sometimes you have to wait a little bit for the moment because sometimes all the plans are aligned. <laughs> that yeah. is like it's happening now in Spain for sure. Uh, and we decided to stop a little bit. Actually, I was uh, living another year in Mexico, so I stopped playing pickleball and organizing pickleball events are all during that year and year and a half. And uh, now we decided to get it back and build this. Uh, crazy thing of the Mediterranean Open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so this tournament in 2020, uh, w w what was it played on? Was it played on badminton courts, like tennis courts? Like how many it people? It was played in a, in a basketball court. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right. Uh, With tape. In, I don't tape know dance. how do you call it. It's a, a wood. A wood is like a, a wood uh, floor. It was Bolts. super fast. Oh, the ball, yeah. it, it, ah, it right. bones a lot. Yeah. It was indoor. Actually, it, it was snowing outdoors. It was, right, right. It was super. It was it was uh, winter in, and it's it there. Well, it's a really cold pl place in Spain. Really, really cold. One of the coldest places in Spain. But it it was really nice. It, we we had uh, really good games, and w we are proud of being the the, the first tournament that uh, consider the women's final after the men's final so it's like it's what's the most important one because it was the last one to play it was the uh, march 8th so we made also a party and a photograph with a with all the with all the the women playing so it's also that's pickleball no it's pickleball it's a, a way to change things and to and to make new community yeah fantastic fantastic so <clears throat> on to the well, the Mediterranean Open. I mean, first of all, you're, you're director of the Mediterranean Open. Just tell us a little bit about what that role entails. So uh, we started uh, like six months ago to create a brand, uh, a brand that was focused on what, do, uh, what does a pickleball player want to experience in a tournament. So it's not only about playing five, six games in a day. It's also about uh, knowing that uh, the starting and the ending time is going to be punctual. It's also about meeting players from all around the world. It's also about uh, being sure that they are going to have fun. And we mix that with, uh, with our Mediterranean lifestyle, that it's something that uh, our, our team will really love. So we think how, how, how we can create a beach club, <laughs> like right. a Mediterranean beach club, like if yeah. you were in Ibiza, Mallorca, Malaga, wherever, and uh, play pickleball at the same time. So we are building this, this party because for us it's a party with DJ, with a paella, with a lot of, with a lot of surprises. And, uh, but at the same time, we want it to be excellent. So that's our vision, to be excellent, to be really polite to everyone, to make everyone is going to have fun. They are going to be on time for their play, for their uh, flights. And for sure, they are going to sleep during the night. They are not <laughs> finishing time. I know with us as organizers, we know that shit happens and shit can happen. But, yeah. but we try to make everything like super 
fix together to allow the players to have a really amazing time. And we also said we need key partners and uh, special venues. That's to, that's a thing to put the pickleball in uh, some conversations that wasn't before. So, for example, when we first talked to the Rafa Nadal Academy, they had no idea what we were talking about. Right. And they, 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 they are a temple of racket sport, but they, they started to know about pickleball a little bit after, after us. Actually, uh, in the regions of Spain, uh, Baleares, the Mallorca is in Baleares, is the, maybe the region with less players in, a, in, a, in Spain. So it, it's really brand new for, for them. But also to make a circuit, because we are built as a circuit, it's not all, only Mallorca, it's Mallorca first, and the second edition is going to be in the uh, Juan Carlos Ferrero Academy in Alicante, that is uh, known because it's Carlos Alcaraz uh, House, the Wimbledon's uh, winner uh, house. and. Uh, then we are negotiating with uh, three or four more cities, but at the end we will have four tournaments a year. That is going to be a party itself, it's open, so we are not feder federated, and, but we are open for people from around the world. And we are really happy because we have now more than 20 countries, people from more than 20 countries coming uh, different, uh, for four continents, different religions, and it's something that it's more than we expected, but we are really happy to, to have that. And we hope uh, we can be at the same uh, altitude that the, 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 challenge, uh, the challenges we are having. Yeah, well, that sounds great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's definitely the way to go with uh, creating these kind of party kind of festivals uh, at the events and things. It's, it's, like you said, it's something different to what you get from other kind of racket sports. We get to reinvent. We're at the beginning of a... A new sport we get to invent it the way we, we want it to be and like you know i think we've seen that with the mlp in the us you know it's very much more a party atmosphere the crowds getting involved very different to kind of tennis yeah actually uh, uh we we always look at uh what you guys do in the uk the the english open this year was like you know more than 1000 players with all the this logistic and that was something crazy i think we, we were, my partner and I, we were talking the other day, like, we cannot do that Maybe in <laughs> three years, something like that. Because, I mean, it's two, two or three hundred players is like a big thing to deal with. I don't want to imagine 1,000 people asking, where can I sleep? <laughs> where where yeah. can I rent a car? What's the best airport to go? Or like, then yeah. where can I eat? So like, that's... Crazy and uh, you know these perfect made uh, courts with uh, with uh, with everything like everyone mm. knowing where to play with the screens. That's something that we are really admire and actually I'm I'm really grateful with uh, with the uh, with the English people because we have a lot of conversation with them first with with Karen uh, Karen Mitchell help us a lot uh, with Tadea with Louis Laville really 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 you can feel that the, the the English players and organizers are always willing to help the growth of the sport that I think is the really the real uh, way of this sport the, the the soul of this sport and I also love it and I also appreciate it yeah so it's I think so is, is it 200 people that are going to be uh, the, uh, registered for the event yeah, I think it's uh, we are, we are close now to be two hundred people uh, between all the different tournaments. Uh, but Mallorca for us is the signature event. We don't expect to have like um, three or four hundred players. It's complicated for the people. It's more expensive because when mm. you are in Spain, if you go to Barcelona, Madrid, or wherever, you just grab a car, five people, and you go uh, to Mallorca. You need a you need a flight. Then the the venue of the Rafael Academy is just amazing. So that means the hotel. It's also it's also it's not it's not like the rest of the hotels in Spain. I mean, it's a five star hotel in front of the course, which is amazing. But at the end, it's if you add uh, the plane, the hotel, and the and the competition, it's more than the average tournament in Spain. But the rest of the tournaments is going to be easier because they, all the Spanish players, they will be able to go with the car. Uh, 
share, yeah. share some some uh, some cost and yeah. But I think our goal is to be five hundred at the end of the next year. Okay. In each tournament. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. So it's yeah, it's the first time at the Rafa Nadal Academy, as we said, right? So um, I know that I've, I, I t- took a look at the the website for the academy. It looks absolutely incredible. Like we've, it's got sleeping uh, places to sleep there, right? It's got it's got paddle courts as well, not just tennis courts, but the places to sleep. Yeah, the rooms look amazing. Um, what, what's the pickleball courts going to be like? Are they going to be played on the tennis courts and taped out, or is it? Yeah, how's that going to work? So I, I have a lot of I like a, a conversation every week with the, with the academy. It's so nice because they are like if you remember the the Sims game, because each week they have something new. It's like it's like amazing. They have a new building. They have a new something. So now they have a pickleball court <laughs> that that happened in the in the last ten days. Uh, ah, but right. I hope they will have more. So the next year we will be playing at the at the pickleball courts that hopefully they will have but we are playing in the um, uh, tennis courts they have one of the best uh, tennis courts uh, hard surface in the in the world uh, and we are also playing in the central court that uh, has a space for 3000 uh, uh, people ah. to watch the game so it's it's amazing it's uh, if you if you see it on the map it's something like like you, crazy because you know that you have uh, like ATP 250 uh, tournaments with less public than the, 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 the venue of Rafa Nadal and yeah they don't only have uh, tennis paddle and accommodation they also have uh, a primar- primary and secondary school they have a hospital they have yeah. a spa it's like yeah it's like, I call it uh, the Disney tennis <laughs> like, yeah for sure I, 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 I want to imagine myself with nine or ten going to study there, and you know, it's like <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. So people kind of, uh, you know, people that uh, I don't know um, the right word, but they, you know, they're really good at the game. Like kids that are playing the game, they get to go there and get they get to do this, go to school there, and then go to the court straight after for practice. And that is that how it works. Yeah, it's, an it's an, like an apprenticeship, they, they, an internship. They, okay. yeah, yeah, they they live there and they study there. It's like, but you know, it's uh, people that really want to be in the ATP at the end of the of of, the, of that. And actually, they they have the ATP Challenger in August, September. I, mm-hmm. I think it's September, and it's like the the way of the Rafa Nadal Academy to try to make all the young players to to earn their first ATP points. So they are really, really focused on the careers of the, mm. of the students. Because, because of the, our tournament, it's crazy because uh, Maria from the academy just told me yesterday that uh, they receive a lot of calls from the US asking if they do a uh, pickleball campus. <laughs> so ah, <laughs> maybe right. in the future, they will have a pickleball campus uh, in, the, in the academy, which is going to be nice because, you know, the place is just incredible. Yeah. So at, at the Open, I mean, is registration open at the moment for the Open? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. We have uh, still like uh, three more weeks until okay. the, the starting of November. Okay. And then um, what sort of levels are, you know, is, are, you, are you catering for all different levels of players? You know, three O up to pro? Yeah, we, we, we decided to make it really simple. We have four tournaments. So we have the uh, elite tournament, the amateur, the plus 55, and then the no limits tournament. That it's a tournament for uh, social entities with players from uh, uh, mental disabilities, Down syndrome, uh, brain damage, and uh, autism. So that tournament is happening on uh, Friday. Uh, with uh, at the same time with the uh, 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 single single ones of uh, elite um, amateur and plus 55 so it's uh, it's elite tournament will leave after a round robin into two tournaments the first and the second one of each uh, group will leave into a 5.0 so it's going to be their tournament for the cash prize 
and the third and the floor and the fourth of a, of every group will lead into a 4.0 and then the amateur is going to be the same two tournaments at the end 3.5 3.0 and with a plus 55 it that will lead into a plus 55 elite and plus 55 uh, amateur so it's going to be th those three tournaments will lead into into six uh, we found it like a really easy way to to do it we have 200 players so it's something you can do not possible for example in, the, in yeah. the english open that you had 1000 because you had if i if i'm not wrong plus 55 plus 60 plus 65 yeah. something like that yeah, yeah. Um, but i think that we will learn about that in the in the future we have a different uh, uh, proposals to change it like you know uh, games uh, three three set games like i don't know someone want to play wants to play the 215 or something like that we will we are having conversations with the, with the clubs we also have this thing called mediterranean associated club uh, so we have uh, really good uh, connections with the, with the clubs and we ask them uh, every time what do you need uh, how do you think that should be so I think at the end the base of the sport is uh, the, the people you, you have to learn about yeah okay that sounds that sounds great and it's I think it's 5,000 euros cash prices right yes but the, at the end it's a lot of more uh, prices because we have a lot of puzzles and a lot of things to uh, <laughs> like giveaways but what is cash is yeah 5000 euros yeah and uh, you're setting you said there's a space for like 3000 uh, seats in the championship area or championship court is uh, are you selling tickets for people to come and watch as well no, we, we will be inviting people from the island to to come and see us because I think it's also an opportunity to show them what pickleball is. Uh -huh. uh, pickleball is, is not is not popular in Mallorca as we as we said before, and I think uh, it, it won't it won't be a good uh, strategy to try to sell tickets because I think no one no one would go. But uh, if we offer to go to schools and maybe mm. universities, maybe. And, and for sure tennis and paddle uh, clubs they will go but the thing is uh it's between of a holiday week in spain because uh, six to ten is like uh like the ski week something somehow the starting of the ski season so maybe a lot of people is out of mallorca during this this week and you know mallorca's population is like half during the winter comparing with the summer yeah so, <laughs> But, but I think we, we will try to do our best, and uh, we also want to invite the social entities of Mallorca. So I think at least we we want to have public, more public than the players of the of the, of our tournament. Yeah. We have to be real, Mark. I, I can tell you, we are going to be three thousand uh, people watching the no. games, but I think it's complicated now. It will be. I think it will be possible in in a few years, but now it's uh, it's something that it, <laughs> that I don't think. So. I would not expect that. You know, like yeah, yeah, because I mean, even if you look at the PPA tournaments uh, on the, you know, you, you know, a lot of the stands aren't even full there, and they're not anywhere near three thousand people, so. Um, yeah, I wouldn't expect, but I don't know. Say, if you sell the party enough, maybe enough people will want to go. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we we are we are we are trying to have a huge pile, yeah. So that's something that <laughs> all the people love. <laughs> right, like uh, one big record-breaking paella, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, also, is any of the are any of the courts going to be streamed? Are you streaming any of the the matches? Yeah, we are negotiating with uh, with one in English and one in Spanish, so it's not signed yet. But uh, I think uh, we will have a YouTube channel with all with all the matches, hopefully. Okay, excellent. So I saw a, a video a few um, about only a few months back with Rafa playing some pickleball. So he's he's had a he's had a go. Is he, is he a yeah interested in the game? Do you think? I think what, what uh, he, his his worries are now uh, trying to play his last uh, Roland Garros and trying to yeah. be uh, <laughs> at the at the Olympics because yeah I think yeah. Uh, 
there, there are a lot of conversations about that in Spain, but I think uh, his goal is to play his last tournament in uh, the Olympics doubles with uh, Carlos Alcaraz. That's something that uh, the Spanish media say it's all the time. But I guess he's super involved in the in the academy. Uh, actually, one of the managers of the academy is his sister, Maribel. Uh, they also have the foundation there. So I think that they, they will be super close to the sport. Uh, it's, it's really, really, really known that he loves golf. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think I think pickleball is a really nice option for for former tennis players. You can see it with Maria Sharapova, Andrea Gassi, John McEnroe, and uh, all these players that are now starting to have these exhibition games. So I think that that's something that is not is not uh, like crazy to think that in maybe in some years some of these uh, top Spanish tennis players will be playing uh, pickleball. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great that he's building. That, you know, they're building uh, pickleball courts at the academy. That's a great. Uh, that's a great sign. A great step forward. So that's awesome. Yeah. What better place to play as well? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, um, what other things? Is there anything else that you're not to say that's not enough work for you? But you know, are, they, are you working on other projects uh, within pickleball? Um. We are we are making the strategy to help uh, pickleball grow in in small places in Spain, but it's uh, only a strategy, and we have a lot of things to do uh, with Mallorca and with Alicante now. Like we would need like forty eight hours a day to do that, and um, you know we also are uh, making our team grow. We are hiring people, so it's it's complicated to think in new projects. But our vision is like really long term. So I think uh, in, uh, maybe in a couple of months, three months, especially after the, the Mallorca's tournament, we will be announcing more more things because we also want to help the the, uh, the 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 sport to grow. And one thing that yeah we are uh, starting to do that it's an actual project. We are uh, we have an agreement with four social entities. Uh, we are working in a protocol for uh, inclusive pickleball, to have an open source protocol for all the world to you know, you know, blind people, Down syndrome people, how, how do the rules should change to be able for, for these kind of players. Okay, okay, that's, that's really interesting. That's, all, that's, like, that's our, like our social value. We, it's, not, it's not a business, it's uh, something we want to do to, to make the pickleball grow also with a, uh, with these social entities that I think it's a great opportunity for for people to have uh, an active life and an uh, inclusive life uh, thanks to pickleball really much easier than paddle or tennis for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. Yeah, okay, that's really interesting. Um, so moving on to the future then, what, what do you see as kind of critical pieces in the puzzle for you know to make sure you continue to get that kind of accelerated exponential growth in Spain over the next 12 24 months what what pieces of the puzzle do you need to put in place do you think over the next few years I think uh something that is really important is to be like to have a common strategy as you know we are different players in the same game we organize events the clubs organize people to play every week. Uh, the public administration has the opportunity to make uh, people play and be more active with the game. So if we all walk in the same direction, that will lead into a growth. So I think we need more courts. Uh, mm, it's easy for us because we are a tennis and a paddle country. It's super easy to find tennis courts in Spain. So to build a pickleball court is easy. You can build it almost everywhere. We have, <laughs> uh, especially in the south and in the Mediterranean coast, in Valencia, Catalonia, Mallorca, you have 350 days of sun every day, every year. So you can, you are you have uh, the possibility to build uh, the outdoor tennis uh, pickleball yeah. courts. That is super super more cheap cheaper than than the, um, than the indoors. And then try to put it in the in the schools. 
make the young people to play it and also the old people i think we have a lot of people coming from from paddle that they are not playing paddle anymore because it's hard for them it's yeah 60 65 years old and i think pickleball it's a great option for them so when you mix the uh, the old people with the young people with also with uh, this image that i think it's something we need to grow to that is the image of pickleball as a uh, competitive sport no not not only like a recreational sport but it's also about competition that the things in the us are helping us with that so that that will be the three pieces of the puzzle together yeah yeah so you're able to get some sort of in investment from tennis right going forward or the government as well to kind of help build courts and those kind of things yeah no yeah i think i think the the public uh, tennis uh, clubs will be really interested in building courts and mm. um also the also the private ones but the federated one because now the pickleball is inside the tennis federation it's also because it's much cheaper you know you need you need uh, one tennis court for each uh, six pickleball courts if you build it really good you, you can you can you can build five or six so it's about uh, the <laughs> it's economical product productive you know mm -hmm. yeah no, that makes sense so looking looking forward then in in five years time where do you, where would you like pickleball to be in Spain what what's your expectations and hopes? <laughs> um, I mean our, our vision is uh, more European than than Spanish. Uh, we want to be one of the of the private uh, circuits the the, the 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 place to be like you know for 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 top players and also for the people who want to come for a community we want to develop a really good relations with uh, other tournaments with other clubs uh like you know maybe maybe we can we can uh, make agreements to make a european circuit uh, something like that to to make it grow to make uh players uh, being able to be professional that i think it's a really important step because now all most of the players are going to the office <laughs> monday to friday or they play tennis or they are tennis professors something like that so help uh i don't know maybe 10 12 players at the beginning to be professional that would be a great step and then the collaboration with uh, different public administration different clubs different tournaments and sharing the extra tea. I, I i mean we 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 are obsessed with the collaborative thing you know it's like if if we fight between between us we are not growing because then mm. another sport will come and if they are together they will grow easily so i think it's about collaboration and about thinking long term how to increase the, this pro tour and also the community for amateur players yeah i think in the future it'd be great to see a european tour as well where there's stops around europe um for, for different matches um and maybe maybe one at the rafa academy one day um would be cool um but i could also also imagine this future where you know, you could be a bit like the Ryder cup where you have uh, europe versus the usa you know once you've got all like this european tour you could then have Europe versus the USA in uh, maybe in 2035. We'll have like a Europe versus USA <laughs> uh, tournament like the yeah, Ryder Cup. That would be great. Yeah, they have they have a, a crazy investment in the US. So it's super complicated to compete with that. Uh, pff, mm. We will not be in, in that position, I mean, in years. So yeah. money helps that to grow a sport. <laughs> of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, so just a few closing questions then. Um, what's your favorite memory uh, since taking on working in Pickable? Uh, the, I have two. The one, one is the organizing the Aragon tournament. Uh, I'll, most of the players telling us it was one of the best tournaments they, they, they went. That was, you know, after when you organize a tournament, the day you the day the day that ends is like when your life starts again and uh, having that uh, that feedback was really really amazing and mm -hmm. i also remember that uh, tuesday mornings 
in the Recuerdo in Madrid playing, we were a group of eight uh, top players, well, a group of seven top players and me, uh, training every every Tuesday. That was super, super amazing. It was a really nice group for only for us. Uh, yeah, with, with Carlos and the rest of the people, that was nice. And also, uh, less than one week ago, actually one week ago exactly, in the Ferrero Academy, uh, saying that we are announcing we are having the, the next tournament that was also a really nice experience because more than 60 uh, young tennis players are uh, starting to play play the ball actually ah. carlos and virginia came and they were really surprised saying in, if they play pickleball in two weeks, they will be winning the Mediterranean Open, you know, <laughs> even if they are 11 or 12, because they, they are they are becoming professional tennis players soon. So it was super easy for them. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, OK, is there anything that I missed that I should have asked you about? Uh, well, I have. Thanks for the opportunity for saying that. I have been interviewed many times in my life, but it's the first time in English. So I hope you understood everything and I hope I understood your questions and I, and I answered them properly. So yeah, that, yeah. that's, but that helped me a lot. Thank you. It's fine. And, You're uh, very uh, <laughs> and, about, and about the, the question, I would say that, uh, what would, but it's a, it's a question that I made to you. That is, uh, okay. What do you think we, we, we can learn? from the English pickleball and what do you think or what, what would you want uh, the English pickleball learn about the Spanish pickleball? Wow. Um, I mean, I think... The interview <clears throat> being interviewed... I, I know. know it's something Put me like on that. the spot. I think, uh, I think the, um, you know, I think probably, the, yeah, the, you, you're already doing it by the sounds of it. You're, you know, you're engaging with Karen and Pickleball England. Obviously, they have a few more years under their belt of organizing the events that have just got bigger and bigger, like every single year. Logistically, like you say, that must be crazy. And I think, you, you know, you can probably pick up a lot of learnings from that, but also, you know, a lot of contacts that they probably have in, in kind of building such a, a an event. Um, what to learn? I mean, it, it's difficult for us. Like, I'm really envious that you have all the space for pickleball courts and you have the climate for the pickleball courts because... Over in the UK, everybody, almost everybody's playing on badminton courts still, right? And uh, it's just not the same as playing on an outdoor surface with an outdoor ball. Um, we sometimes get the opportunity to have courts taped out, but you know, we don't have that. So I'm, I'm really envious. Like, um, But in terms of like what we can learn from this, the Spanish uh, game, I think... It, yeah, it's hard to say, but I mean, I think even from the outside, right? Like l looking in, like I th it's a collaboration thing, right? So there's going to be things that you've thought about that you have experience in that we just don't have experience in, especially when it comes to the chance where we might actually be able to start creating our own facilities, maybe with some outdoor courts, but they're probably going to be better off if they've got a little, a, a, some sort of roof on them. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, learning, learning how you kind of put together those kind of things, I guess is probably kind of helpful. That's yeah. probably not a very good answer because I haven't really thought about it too much, but, um, <laughs> but like you said before, like collaboration is kind of key. I think if everybody can share, um, th th to that and then help that vision to growing the sport across the world, um, that's only going to be, you know, help us get there better in a more efficient way. So. Yeah. I mean, I mean during these days of, uh, uh, confrontation and everything. I think sport is a really nice tool to be more, you know, to, to, to help other people and to be more connected, more in peace and everything that mm -hmm. is also, we, we all need that. And pickable, you can see that when you go to a tournament, it doesn't matter if you come from India, from the US, from Spain, from Italy, we are all together, we play the same and we, we forget our differences and we just uh, play pickleball and we are a community. Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing that's kind of part of the joke. It's like you play people, with, you play, you meet up to play people pickleball. We don't know anything about them, where they live, where they come from. You just meet and play pickleball. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess the other thing is the social entities, right? You mentioned about that. Like, I don't know what's going on with Pickleball England in that respect. I don't think they're creating rules for, obviously we had the wheelchair competition and wheelchair players uh, in the open and in the UK and they've got adapted rules. 
Um, but yeah, if you're progressing anything towards uh, making uh, Pickleball more accessible for all different social entities, then I think that is definitely something that we, everyone should share. Yeah, and I think also the also the professional rules will change. You know, it's a super dynamic sport, so maybe in five years the rules yeah. are going to change a little bit. Well, it changed sometimes before, three years ago, four years ago, the, the, the bounce, everything. But I think it's going to be like more, more changes in the next few years. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I have one last question for you. Uh, this question was posed by the previous guest, guest Elaine Shalcross. Okay. Um, I'll get a question from you for the next guest after the show. Um, okay. Cool, but uh, cool. but this, this question is for you. So... Um, it's could be a, this question could be personal or it could be if you ha have any scientific knowledge then it's then that would be useful as well but is it what it, what is it about pickleball that makes it so addictive is the question uh, i i would say the 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 com two things first is the community so it's easily to make friends and a good group of people with a uh, with even people that you would never connect in 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 your real life <laughs> to say that and the other thing is it's easy to learn. So it, uh, it has a lack of frustration that other sports uh, have because in two hours you can be able to play a game that doesn't happen in, 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 uh, in, any, yeah. in any other sport. So that, that, I think that, that is the two things, yeah. Yeah, super accessible. And uh, my question, do you need, you need now my question, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, we can do it after the show if you like. So I, I'll keep it secret okay. in case the recording okay, goes okay, out. But okay, yeah, you cool. should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no one, no one is preparing for the question. No. Okay. <laughs> that's right. No one's preparing <laughs> for it. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Luis, for coming onto the show. If people want to find you, um, where's best for them to go look? Well, both the Mediterranean Open and I in, in, on Instagram. There's a dot Mediterranean Open for for the for the tournament and me Luis de Cristobal all together. A complicated mm -hmm. to say in English, I know Luis de Cristobal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you type it all together, I will, you will find me on on Instagram and also I'm really addicted to LinkedIn uh, as uh, individually myself and uh, yeah, and in but mainly in Instagram. Okay, excellent. Okay, well. Thank you very much, Lewis, for coming on to the Pickleball Addiction podcast. Thank you. It has been a really pleasure. I'm honored to be here. And uh, you will be always the first interviewer for me in English. <laughs> so it's a really challenge. And I hope you can come to Mallorca and uh, make <laughs> all the UK know what's going on in, in Spain with the Pickleball. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, that's an honor for me too, then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs>